The Black Caps have sent India hurtling down to possibly their darkest ever hour. India, who had last week seen themselves consigned to a first home series defeat in 12 years, now taste a test series whitewash on home soil for the first time in their history in a series of three or more matches. Welcome to ESPN Trick and Four Match Day, where we're joined by Sanjay Manjrekar to look back on a series which is nothing short of history. Sanjay, it was almost unimaginable thinking last week that, oh, for the first time in a generation, India have lost a series at home. But now, it's something we have never witnessed in this long history of Indian Test cricket. And just go back to that series, uh, you know, against Bangladesh and how India finished that series in Bangladesh came with some reputation beating Pakistan in their backyard and then New Zealand came along. I remember like uh, uh, <laughs> uh, being too smart and saying, you know, let's expect more of the same from New Zealand and look what they've dished out. So a brilliant performance by New Zealand first up, but I'm sure the greatest story will be about India not losing one to the three test matches in their own conditions, tailor-made in the last two test matches. So that is the biggest story, but well done to New Zealand. And it has been a surprise, but test cricket you know, gets livened up when we see these kind of results. Yes, it's a result that puts India even further into a corner as far as their World Test Championship final hopes are concerned. More on that later, but talk us through this unfolding on day three, the latest unfolding, might we call it. Uh, I saw your tweet saying that we've seen 46 and we've seen 36, but this is possibly worse. Yes, because this is one kitty stadium where we've seen scores of 160 being chased down with four wickets in hand. We've seen teams reach 200 and more um, um, at the end of a test match. And this may not be the fifth day, but uh, one kid is not that bad. And guys who sort of balance defence with attack, and guys who had good defence were able to survive a lot longer, were more consistent. Will Young being a great example, Rishabh Pant in his own genius way, almost won the game for India. But I say that because of the kind of shots that we saw from some players. And also, you know, it was a small target. You know, let's be very honest, uh, India um, should have you know, got 175, 180, or even 190, 200, not able to get this score is something that I didn't expect, despite, you know, the uncertainties around the new generation of Indian batters. But the first six wickets were painful to watch. Yeah, the conventional wisdom with uh, these low targets tends to be that if one batter can score a quick 40, 50, that's the target done. Yet here you have a case where one batter has made 64 of 57. The rest together haven't scored as much. And perhaps that is the most damning indictment of this batting performance. Yes, and what I realized after watching the conditions that were there and watching Rishabh Pant play. Now, you might want to attack and you know not play traditionally and put the bowler off. But finally, you've got to succeed. Finally, you've got to get the runs. Finally, you've got to win the game. And for that, if you've chosen the attacking route, you better be exceptional. Almost genius level, you know, brilliant that we saw with Rishabh Pant. And if we aren't that kind of an attacking player, then it's a recipe for disaster. I mean, the shot that Sarfraz Khan played, he had two full tosses that he tried to sweep, got out to the second one. So if you want to attack, you better be very good at it. I don't expect these uh, players, this generation players, to play defensively. But as I said, if you're going to be attacking, there's got to be some, you know, smartness in the way you attack. I mean, look at Rishabh Pan. In that first innings, we saw him, you know, play differently. In the second inning, there were a lot of pull shots and shots behind the pitch because he realized that was, you know, the area to go to. So you've got to be really smart to succeed by playing attacking cricket and really gifted in conditions like this. So there you go. It's also an innings and a test match, which perhaps adds further credence to Pant perhaps being India's best test batter at the moment? Yes, and today, you know, the word genius came to my mind uh, purely because even on this pitch with the kind of, uh, you know, pressure on him and, and it's not the first time that he's done this. You know, he seems to be doing this uh, uh, on a regular basis in a very short career. This was, if he had he won the game for India, would have been another 
great Indian innings and that would have been another, what, third or fourth in his short career. But yes, to score runs so quickly at that kind of strike rate and still playing one way, looking to attack. And again, like we mentioned yesterday, when he defends as a very last resort, he seems to not give it the kind of respect that it deserves and both uh, innings he got out trying to play a defensive shot. But while he was out there, you could see the New Zealand players getting desperate going for a review that was clearly wasn't and then they asked for a review that was, uh, you know, out. So, Rishabh Pan is that kind of a player. Uh, it's not just about the skills that he has. He's just got this amazing temperament where, you know, if there is a, a mat that rests on his shoulders, you just see the best of him. There will be enough Indian fans who will bring up that decision eventually, which sent him back. What did you make of the bat pad? Was it bat on pad? See, from what evidence you got on TV, there was one frame where it seemed the bat was in front and that seemed to be uh, when we heard the movement on ultra edge. If that bat uh, you know, wasn't in front of the pads, then uh, maybe Pant would have got the benefit of doubt. But the umpire went by what he saw. Clearly, Rishabh Pant didn't um, think that he had hit it, but so did Ashwin. So these are things, you know, technology surprises you. Who knows whether there was a little bit of bat or there wasn't, but the umpire had to go with photographic evidence that they had. And there was one frozen frame that, uh, you know, got the umpire to rule out. It's worth uh, spending some time on the overall series batting display, Sanjay, because there was 46 to begin with. There was 156 all out in Pune and now failing to chase 150. Is this the worst collective batting display you've seen from India in a series? Could be. You know, it's very difficult to quickly go back, you know, because Test cricket is, has a long history. So it's very difficult to pick out another performance. There may have been one pretty close to this, but I'll say this. Why Indian batting looked uh, really poor and very glaring were their, you know, uh, how they capitulated in a lot of the innings is that what we saw in this home series was typical sort of, uh, you know, pitches where you needed, along with the attacking skills, you needed some old school batting. I'm not mentioning Pujara here. <laughs> so when it comes to old school batting, there are just two guys. Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. And both of them had a horrid run of form. And if they were in reasonably good form, the differences that you see, the margins of win and defeat, uh, would have been different because these are batters from old school. These are guys who made their debuts in 2010 and 2013 and all that. So they had the requisite skills. Unfortunately, both of them were out of form. And that actually... Uh, you know, hurt India a lot because the next generation are almost sort of learning on the job. Form aside, when you look at those two individuals, uh, Rohit Sharma, the line between brave and reckless appeared to be getting a bit blurry in this series. I will never say that he's reckless because he is finding his own way to ensure that he gets runs to get the team to win. Uh, clearly, doesn't trust his defence anymore. You could see that today. There was a leg before appeal and that must have just uh, made him feel unsettled even more. So the next thing that he looks to do is counter-attack and he did that because the target wasn't a huge one. And who knows, a couple of shots here and there and he would have you know, maybe replicated that Bangladesh uh, run chase. But uh, the shot that he played to get out was uh, where he was trying to hit that ball into the stands rather than just uh, make the connection. He's missing a few of his, you know, big hits. There was one in the first test match as well where he stepped out and tried to hit the ball out of the ground. So he's mishitting a lot of his attacking shots and he's not trusting his defence enough. So that's a real problem for Rohit Sharma currently. The conversations are going to veer towards what the future holds. The last time India lost a test series at home, it marked the beginning of the end for some of the batters from that generation, including the current coach in Gautam Gambhir. Uh, does this one, could this one, wear a similar look as far as Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli are concerned? If there was another home series, 
now after this and another one after that then would have been you know something that maybe the selectors would have contemplated but now because the next series is going to be in australia which is going to be a completely different uh, ball game I and mean, you look at those numbers those are yeah depressing numbers to say the least so similar conditions you would worry about the indian batting lineup but when you go to australia uh, it's completely different what you'll get is mostly pace and bounce and that was a thing that wasn't exposed in these two battles when they were playing these were just completely different pitches they needed uh, you know some skills to play spin well there is going to be nathan lyon but nothing like the surfaces that we've had here so it's going to be a different test they have failed miserably in this test but that test is going to be a completely different one so uh, there is still hope so then i do want you to look further ahead because india are now stepping into a touring cycle five tests in australia they do play five tests in england middle of next year so close to a year till they play at home next do you see these two around the next time india play a home test very difficult to answer this question because everything will depend on how they go in australia and that will be a confirmation of where their career is heading and it's not just about runs how they look while getting their runs you could see with tendulkar as well in the last 15 20 test matches he was getting the odd 50 or a 90 but you could see that he wasn't the same and when you get that confirmation and that has to uh, be in australia and not right away i think uh, once you get there there'll be a lot more clarity and certainty for the selectors as well All right. Another question. Looking ahead, this is more in terms of what India choose to do at home. When India do return to playing tests at home next year, do you think <laughs> they need question. to? Do you think? <laughs> do you think they need to revisit their pitch strategy? Do India need to allow their batters to feel a bit more at home when they play at home? Yeah. So the email to the curator could go in this fashion, saying that we don't want a green top. we don't want to pitch where it seems a lot and we certainly don't want to rank turn so try and give us something in between jokes apart uh let's hope that this is maybe an exception and uh yeah there's one thing that's come out clearly from this home series and the kind of challenges that you get uh in home conditions you've got to have players who either play a lot of domestic cricket play on pitches like this play a lot of spin or get your you know big name international players to also feature in some red ball cricket in uh, in first class cricket in india if you're serious about test cricket and wanting to be in the number one side in test cricket i think that is a big lesson learned your players who are playing for india need to be playing on these kind of pitches a little more all right let's leave the india angle at that like we said close to a year till india next play at home let's see how different the picture looks uh, by that by the time that comes around let's focus on new zealand sanjay a proud moment for them let's start with this test before we look at what they did over the course of this series and on the final day ajaz patel looking every bit the mumbai born and bred person he is yes sir uh, and you know just imagine new zealand have won 3-0 without kane williamson it's like in a few years back if india went into a series without virat kohli when virat was uh, in in his prime like kane williamson currently without kane williamson and in the last test on a pitch like this without mitchell santner they still win the test match and you know we said here that if ajas patel turns in another performance a match winning one without mitchell santner that would be like you know brilliant so you've got to take your hat off to ajas patel kept it simple looks a very relaxed happy uh, person bowled a little quickly to rishabh pant to all others he stayed to his you know natural bowling style and just brilliant to rise to the occasion so this has been a great you know series for new zealand there will be certain players will go back home feeling so much better up about them so ajas patel more than the 10 wickets that he got last time this performance in this test match in this series and will young another that will go back new zealand feeling really proud and feeling upbeat uh, you know about himself yeah, in fact when we look at this series you go back to bengaluru there was matt henry and will o'rourke uh mitchell santner's show in pune ajas patel with a hand from glen phillips so so many bowlers contributing 
And then you look at the bat. Will Young, Rachin Ravindra, what he did in Bengaluru. Daryl Mitchell with runs. Devin Conway with runs. It's about as comprehensive as it comes as a collective. Yes, and there was always somebody for the occasion, Devin Conway, to begin with. Then he lost a bit of form. Rachin Ravindra showed what an exceptional player of spin is. Daryl Mitchell was the slowest to get off the mark, but when he did, got a wonderful 80. I mean, when you look at uh, the test match now, that 80 is a, is a brilliant performance. But the one guy who steadily and consistently showed improvement was Will Young. And on the same page, you just have to look at how he looked at the crease and how he sort of had the right balance of modern-day cricket plus what is needed as defensive skills. So, brilliant. Uh, and if Mitchell Santner would have played, they would have had that batting you know, contribution as well. So, to play without two of their key players and Glenn Phillips, you know, my respect for this guy has grown because I just love the way, you know, they're all earnest cricketers. Uh, they don't try and do too much. They know their limitations, but you could see that the effort to win this test match despite winning the series was brilliant. And Glenn Phillips is one of those guys just ran in and bowled his heart out in the field. He... Uh, stops every ball like his life depends on it and plus those two sixes you know 12 runs so yeah each and every uh, player in that team performed yeah 26 of 14 from glenn phillips in the second innings quite telling in the end outcome yeah. we ran through almost an entire 11 of names sanjay without naming one person and that's tom latham had a great knock in pune that 86 uh, but his first series as permanent captain comes in for what is considered the toughest challenge in 21st century cricket. And here he is. He's joined Cronier, Gilchrist and Cook as the only captains to have done this. Yes, uh, and uh, you know there are a lot of things we don't see. I mean, tactically, you couldn't see anything that would say, you know, he's the best captain that we've seen. With Ben Stokes, it's very obvious, you know, what he does. Um, Tom Latham is not so much in your face kind of captain. But I love the way he was handling reviews all along, you know, very calm and calculated, typifying uh, that New Zealand, you know, trait of being calm people. Good batter, and I wish he had carried his form after that 80. But I'm sure as a leader, there's something there that's happening that's getting all these guys to play in the fashion that they did. I mean, this is a huge day for New Zealand cricket. Tom Latham um, is the one leading this kind of uh, big, um, you know, uh, climb towards the top of New Zealand cricket. I'm looking at New Zealand cricket's history and this has to uh, go down as one of their best performances. And Tom Latham, as leader, has done nothing wrong. He's been there at the helm, uh, watching over these people, you know, uh, just surprise everyone with their tremendous performance in this series. So, well done to the captain. Yeah, could hear Simon Duell on the broadcast saying, this has to be, without doubt, New Zealand's greatest ever Test Series victory. But let's talk in terms of world cricket before we close this out. I want you to consider the 25 years of this century where you've spent all this time broadcasting. And we've seen a fair few upset results. Is this perhaps the greatest Test upset of the 21st century? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can say that. Uh, it comes very close to Sri Lanka beating South Africa. In South Africa. And South Africa didn't have one of the sides that we recently saw them put out in New Zealand. So this was South Africa with all their you know, top batters and top bowlers. And Sri Lanka beat them 2-0. We saw two great innings. One, Kushal Pereira getting one of the greatest test innings ever. And then Kushal Mendes in the second test. So that ranks to me as one of the biggest surprises for a Sri Lankan team, for an Asian team. And we didn't have all the big stalwarts to go to South Africa, which India have, has found as the final frontier that they haven't quite conquered yet. Sri Lanka doing that was just amazing. Yeah, it was an upset. It was, uh, you know, a great performance. But 3-0. And in conditions like we had in Bangalore, and then suddenly we see the other end of the spectrum with the kind of pitches that we had. You've got to say this is... Along with that, <laughs> another, uh, you know, one of the biggest upset. But I don't want to call it upset because I just uh, wonder, two years later, if we had the same team playing against India, uh, they might be able to trouble India as much, maybe a little lesser, but they'll challenge India. You can't say the same about Sri Lanka when they go to South Africa. So this, more than upset, has to be just against expectation, 
just a tremendous performance from new zealand all right those are uh, fine parting words to close out the series i guess and one that we couldn't have imagined i guess the only thing everyone in the world got right was calling a 3-0 score line it's just that it turned on its head so thank I you i said more Sandeep. of the same <laughs> before the series began so you didn't ask me as in what yeah you got the score line right well done yeah absolutely thank- more of the same Thank you so much, Sanjay. It's been a pleasure having your company through this undoubtedly historic series, and that's where Absolutely. we close our coverage. Absolutely. On ESPN Absolutely. Trick Info Match Day, New Zealand, they who had won just two out of thirty-six tests in India before this, go back three-zero winners, and an empire stands crestfallen.